Okay, we're going to wrap up topic four, basic data structures, with a quick first look at trees, which we're going to examine much more later in the course, and also defining the ADT for dynamic sets. This is a specification of handling sets that we implement in many different ways in this course. The image here is on the trail down into Pololu Valley, and of course we have some trees here, and a very dynamic beach. And actually on this beach there's more of those rock stacks. A quick look at binary trees. Binary trees are graphs in which you have a designated root node, and the root node has zero, one, or two children, as all do all other nodes in the tree. So they can look like this, they can have one ch child, zero, one, or two. And later in the course we're going to discuss quite a bit the characteristics of different tree structures. Now in terms of implementation, this is a natural place to introduce the implementation of binary trees because we can use nodes that look a lot like the list structures that we just talked about. Something that has the data, let's say a key, and then we had previously the prev and the next, but this is going to be the left child and the right child. And they're pointers to other nodes like that. So you can build up arbitrary structures using these list nodes. List List nodes are very flexible things to build data structures out of. In fact, an entire programming language called Lisp, for list processing, uh, is built out of structures like this. Even simpler ones, it's actually built out of the structures of singly linked lists. So let's, uh, let's maybe say, um, let's throw in a little data here, I guess. Um, a, B, C, just so I have something to refer to. Uh, let's give it some more children. Okay, so that's a valid binary tree representation. Um, the uh, data is not ordered in any particular way in this tree. Well, I happen to write it out alphabetically left to right, but uh, we will talk later about trees that have particular orderings. Uh, things like insertion, deletion, and trees are kind of complicated, and uh, as I mentioned, there's different ways of ordering them. So we're going to get to that later. Uh, a very simple uh, concept here is traversing a tree and printing out the nodes. So for example, you might write a procedure that starts out at the root node and uh, it can make a choice about whether to print out the, the key of the node now or do it after it's done its subtree. Um, so you may remember uh, in order, pre-order, and post-order we can traverse the tree, and if we print out the, the a key as soon as we see it, that's pre-order. And then we, we recurse on the, the left subtree and uh, continue. Uh, if we print out the, that key as soon as we see it, that would be um, continuing a pre-order. So pre-order traversal here might look like um, A, print it as soon as you see it, B, D, and then when you when you hit, um, these are actually you know, nil, these fields here. When you hit nil, in other words, no more children, then you return back to where you were, and then you continue down to the right child. And so then you would see E, you hit nil on both children, return back, continue over here, C, F. Uh, in order is when you defer the printing until you've done the left child, and, but you do it before the right child. So in order would be... Um, okay, do the left child first, do the left child first. Okay, print the D. No more children. Now we can print the B before we do its right child, which is the E. Now we return from this tree, we're back to the A, we can print the A. Um, and we continue the right child. Well, print the left children first, there aren't any. Print the node, print the right child, like that. And post order, of course, is after your children, so... Um, Go down, go down, go down, no children, we print the D, return, still got children, print the E, come back, now we're allowed to print this, uh, come back, we still got children, so do them, C still has, still has children, so do the F first, and then the C, and then the A. So one of your problems will be to write the procedure for doing this kind of traversal. Now this is limited to 
binary trees, this representation, what if we wanted binary trees? What if we wanted to have lots of children? Let's take a look at that. So an obvi obvious generalization of what we just talked about would be to make nodes um, that handle k children. You know, let's say we want, wanted uh, five children. So we could make a node, a giant node, four, five. So one of these, no, one of these fields would be the data. Let's let's say uh, you know key, k for key here, uh, and then the other ones are child one, child two, child three, child four, and child five. But what if you don't have uh, what if you have a variable number of children? You, know, you can allocate a node that's big enough for the maximum number of children you expect. But then it might be the case that a whole lot of these are empty and you've wasted space. So it would be nice to have a more flexible representation. Before I go on to that flexible representation, I should say that there are situations in which this is exactly how things are best done. Uh, most notably, uh, the hard disks. When, the, when you read from a disk, it takes a certain amount of time to move the head over the position in the disk where it's going to read from, that's a huge amount of time compared to the amount of uh, the, you know, CPU rates and things like that. So they want to read in as much as possible. So they read in a large block at a time, even if you're only looking for a t one bit of data on the disk. They'll read in like you know um, a megabyte, or I don't know what the current rates are, but a huge chunk of data. And the trees that index uh, to locations on the disk are constructed such at, that the size of the node of the B tree, they're called B trees, corresponds to the size of that read of a sector of the disk. So you, you read in as much information that you need as possible. But in many other cases, we want to have trees where there can be a variable number of children. Uh, an example might be um, expressions, you know, where there's unary, binary um, uh, operators and operators with more arguments. Or, um, <clears throat> you can do um, be parsing natural language and so on. Uh, so there's actually a way to do this using the same node structure we use for the binary tree. Um, we're just going to call it, I'm going to write this out here, so uh, left right sibling, left child right sibling. So let's write that out. Okay, left child right sibling representation takes the previous nodes we had where we had, you know, we had the data in the middle here. And this one points to the left child, just like we had before. So, so far, nothing different than a binary tree. But this one actually is going to be nil. Let's say there's another, let's say we want to get three children for this node. This points to the left child, but then the right node points to the right sibling. So basically it's a it's a linked list, a single linked list at each level. And the, then the prev field of, of the doubly linked list is, is used for children. So you can see again these nodes are very flexible for constructing different kinds of lists. Um, <clears throat> let's say that uh, this one has two children. Um, this one maybe doesn't have any, this one has one, so left child, right sibling, nil, no. left child, no right siblings, no left children, uh, no right siblings, and uh, one other thing we're missing though is that you need a pointer back to the tree. So actually I was a little bit off here in writing that k there. Uh, let's just assume that data is stored there somewhere. I haven't drawn it. Uh, we actually need to have a parent pointer in here uh, in, in order to run the uh, procedures going to run on this thing. So uh, these things all point back to their, their parents. So at any given point tra traversing through the um, siblings, you can, you can skip out of it and go back to your parent. So there's a nicer drawing of that in the uh, in the web notes, uh, but you can maybe think about how you would traverse this. You know, suppose you wanted to print out all the nodes of the trees. 
well, in different orders. Well, you can you can say, well, I'll just follow the pointers, go down, uh, you know, do all the left children, and then do the siblings. And when you're done with the siblings, come back up. And then you can do the siblings at that level, recursing on any children you find. And when you're done with them, you come back up. So doing that kind of strategy, you can get a similar um, you know, printing out, or not just printing out, you know, processing nodes of a tree in a certain order. So that's something to think about. Okay, that's it for trees. We're going to go into them in much more detail later. Finally, let's consider the dynamic set ADT. Uh, the data structures we've been reviewing so far keep track of objects under specific organizational schemes, like you know, first in, first out, last in, first out, sequential as in a list, hierarchical as in a tree. Often we just need to have a set. We just need to keep track of a bunch of objects, add objects to it, see if there's objects or members of it, and we may, may uh, additionally want to order the set. So we may say, well, there, um, there's an ordering relation on the elements of the set, and so we may also want to ask, what's the biggest, what's the smallest in the set, or given an element in the set, what's the next bigger, what's the next smaller? Okay, the textbook uh, gives us this dynamic set ADT, so we can search for a key in the set, we can add something to the set, delete something, find the smallest element. Um, if these last four are only for um, ordered sets, you could have just the first three things are all that you have. And for obviously the list representation meets the first three, and then if you order the list, you can use do the others. So you can do a minimum, maximum, given an uh, element in the set, return the successor or return the predecessor. So those are the basic ADT um, <coughs> operations for the dynamic set ADT. Uh, now there is an issue here uh, that I discuss in the notes that this is returning a pointer X to an element in the set such that the key is K. It's not really clear whether they mean an element that is meaningful to the client or an element of the implementation like one of these list cells. Um, the insert operation says we usually assume that any attributes in element X needed by the set implementation have been mod initialized. Uh, so this suggests to me that this specification is for the private methods of the ADT. You would not expose that to the public because you don't want the client of your ADT to know, have to know what the implementation is. Um, and notice that the, the uh, insert and delete are operating on the, for example, this might be a list element in a list, so they don't have to search for it anymore. You know, the search is given a key and it has to go find the list element, but insert and delete are already given the list element at the uh, to, to operate on. In particular, delete is given a pointer to the element in the data structure, so you don't have to search for it. Let me show you an alternative approach. So this one I just showed you has the problem that it's not an appropriate specification for the the external interface to a dynamic set because it exposes internal um, implementation aspects. So an alternative might be this one, which I've written in a different notation. This is in uh, uh, Java. Let's make this maybe a little bit smaller. Um, interface notation. And the main difference that I have on this one is that we only give it ob of, type, of some key type, we never expose to the outside world um, the implementation of the, of the element. Now what that means is, okay, a search may have to spend some time finding it. You know, we've seen with lists, it could be order of n. Uh, and that means that the delete, given a key, has to go find the element in the list to delete. So even though you already found it here, you may have to pay the order of n cost again to find it here. Now there are more sophisticated implementations that work with something called position, which is an abstraction of the of the implementation element. It's a, it's a, it encapsulates or hides information about what the implementation is. You know whether it's a tree or a list, but it gives you an object that the implementation can use to go directly to its position in the data structure. Um, so it's kind of analogous to the uh, the books specification, but it's explicitly um, abstracting away from the implementation. And you can read about that in, in uh, there's an algorithms textbook by Goodrich and Tomasia that goes into that in some detail. 
All right, well, um, we're going to be returning to this dynamic set ADT later. Uh, one thing I'm going to ask you to do as uh, some of your problems is to consider the, the, the um, big O cost, worst case cost, for these various operations given different implementations we've discussed, uh, such as the singly linked and the doubly linked list implementation. Well, that's it for topic four basic data structures.